Hey there, my name is Chris Acton with Acting Creative and this is a handwoven experience. The episode title for today is, so you wanna buy a loom? <laughs> I think it's so exciting when you get to that point when you are ready. You are ready to purchase a loom of your own so that you have it in your house with you all the time. That is just a pivotal moment for any weaver. So I wanna help you along as you are going through the process of procuring your loom. So today's episode is three of my recommendations for how to purchase the right loom for you. So here's my first recommendation is to get clear or as clear as you can about what loom you are looking for. Now to do this, I've got three little qualifications uh, or questions. I should say, uh, number one, what do you want to make? If you already know that you want to make big old rugs, that helps you narrow down what kind of loom you are looking for. Number two, how much space do you have? Are you in a tiny apartment with three roommates or do you have a sprawling ranch where space is no issue? Number three, what is your budget? Did, uh, did you just get an inheritance and you're like, okay, hey, I'm gonna blow it all in a loom, great. Or are you pitching pennies and you wanna do it the most cost effective way possible? Those three questions should really kind of help you narrow it down to exactly what kind of loom are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Recommendation number two, if at all possible, test drive a few looms. Now you may be thinking, okay, I don't know how to do that. How do I find looms to test drive? Well, one of the easy ways is to take a class because so many of these weaving schools are gonna have a variety of looms and you can sit down and kick it around. See if you like the motion, see if you like how the brake works, how do the shafts lift and lower? Try all of that out. You could also attend a conference. They will always have looms for you to try, mostly because they wanna sell you one, but you can absolutely sit down and try a whole series of looms at a, in a conference setting. But you can also just ask around who else in your community, in your area might have a loom or their Aunt Laura has a loom or something to that effect. But it is, I think, really important to spend a minute with the loom before you purchase, if at all possible, of course, because there may be little things that annoy you that you wouldn't have anticipated. Just, uh, just as a thought. Recommendation number three, do not limit yourself on where you're looking for looms. Of course, you can go straight to the manufacturer and order one from their website or however you want to do that. Of course you can. But I, I love recommending getting used looms and that, whew, that opens up the gates a lot, doesn't it? Cause you can find used looms on Facebook marketplace, on eBay, on Etsy. There's all kinds of options for where you can find, um, used looms. Look for estate sales. Do you have a local weaver's guild that you could reach out and be like, Hey, I'm in the market for a loom. Even if it's not local weaver's guild, what's the closest weaver's guild? Because I know for, from experience that with our local weaver's guild, we get folks that call us, I bet four or five times a year that say, Hey, I got a loom. So-and-so passed away. We're trying to move it. Do you have someone who, anyone who's interested? Mm -hmm. Weaver's Guilds are a font of information, that is for sure. So think kind of outside the box. What are all the options for where you could find a loom? Don't just get kind of caught up in, well, I have to buy a new one straight from the manufacturer. Now you can, there's nothing wrong with that. However, there's a lot of really beautiful, lovely looms out there waiting for a good home. Shoot, some of these places where you're taking classes, they may sell you the loom right there. So don't, uh, don't limit yourself. Yeah. Keep an open mind of how this loom could come into your life. And, uh, before you know it, I'm guessing you'll be uh, making beautiful fabric at your own house on your own loom. So just to recap, here are my three recommendations for buying a loom. Number one, get very clear on what kind of loom you're looking for. If you know you're never gonna do a tapestry, don't just, just strike that off, right? If you know that you have a small space, you're probably gonna want a table loom. If you know that you want to do big rugs, you just uh, look for a, uh, a bigger loom, like a big rug loom, right? Something heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Recommendation number two, if at all possible, 
try out some looms. Just uh, take a class, attend someplace where other weavers will be, and um, try out some looms because you may be surprised by what you like and don't like. Mm -hmm. And number three, don't limit yourself when you actually are starting to look for a loom to purchase. It doesn't have to be new. And once you start to think about a used loom, there's a lot of options out there. Now, something I've done as an extra little perk for my Acting Creative Insider membership is I have compiled a list of the major loom manufacturers in North America with their website so that you can see who is who and what kind of looms they are creating. So if you're in the market for a loom and you're just kind of dipping your toe in and you want to learn more about it, it's a great reason to join the Acting Creative Insiders because you'll have a list right there at your fingertips to uh, start the process. By the way, please let me know what loom you end up with. I love hearing stories about people's looms, so do not hesitate to share in the comments that uh, your first loom was fill in the blank. It's very exciting. All right, friends, that's what I've got for you this week. Happy shopping to you, and uh, I can't wait to see what you'll create on your brand new loom. Have a great week. Happy weaving.